When I look at quarterbacks, especially rookies that just entered the NFL, I try to make my analysis based on a trade-by-trade -trade discussion. What they excelled at and what they need to work on becomes the framework for my analysis. For Daniel Jones, this discussion is especially important. During his rookie season, Jones showed high quality traits that you'd like to see from a franchise quarterback. He also made some terrible mistakes that definitely leave you wanting more. This roller coaster type of performance, as I like to call it, happened from game to game and even happened more locally from play to play as well. You would see Jones make a great throw from under pressure with a defender in his face. Then on the very next play, Jones would put the ball up for grabs and you were left wondering why. It was maddening going through his film throughout the season. To illustrate this inconsistency, look no further than his first start against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In the third quarter, Jones showed us how he has the ability to create big plays under pressure and uses mobility to keep the play alive. The Giants ran a play action out of offset eye formation. First, Jones faked the handoff to his running back while the left receiver ran a deep post and his tight end on the right ran a crossing route. Meanwhile, the running back leaked into the flat as a check down option. The order of the progression for Jones is high to low. You start with the post route, you then move on to the crosser, and then finally you finish with the check down if neither of the first two receivers are open. Against a single high safety team, the crosser typically becomes your main target just because the safety will try to play deeper than the deepest. This is what opens a gap behind the linebackers. That didn't happen here. The safety lost track of the post route and Jones made him pay. Jones immediately sensed the pressure come from the edge, moved forward into the pocket while keeping his eyes down the field, and he threw a great pass to his receiver. While well, yes, Jones did drift into the left tackle, almost getting decked mid-throw, this was still an awesome play. The Giants gained 46 yards in this one. I mentioned the roller coaster before and that maddening consistency, and it can be seen on the very next play. It's first and goal from the four-yard line. On this one, Jones is late recognizing he has an open receiver, and then to top it off, he threw the ball behind his target, completely missing him for what could have been a touchdown. After rolling to his right, Jones should have seen Russell Shepard getting open underneath the Bucks' defense due to their miscommunication. This is where he should have thrown it. Even if you want to argue that he was worried the defender would deflect it, he still missed his target after he cleared the defenders that were chasing him. The ball should have been placed in front of his target instead of behind, allowing Shepard to shield the ball and bring it in. Jones simply missed him. While that last play was painful, the roller coaster was back two plays later. Jones made a great throw on a corner route to score the touchdown. On third and goal from the seven yard line, the Giants ran a play called Dusty. Dusty is a West Coast offense play featuring a corner out from the inside receiver, followed by two in-breaking routes from the outside. Against main coverage, the corner route is your main target. Jones sees that he likely has main coverage before the snap, and he threw an excellent pass that only his receiver could bring in. The ball is placed outside in front of his target, allowing his receiver to scare it to the ground for the touchdown. This was a really good throw. As you can see, these last three plays that were almost back to back to back featured very different results. And yes, before you yell at me and remind me that this was his first start of the season, trust me, I get that. But this back and forth inconsistency is only pointed out to illustrate a trend. This trend is just something I noticed all season long. While we'll come back to this idea later in the video, I first wanted to start by discussing some of the positive things I saw from his film. After going through all of his throws from the 2019 season, what stood out to me was his fast recognition at running the quick passing game. We knew this would be a potential plus for him coming out of Duke since they run a lot of pro concepts, but he typically went through his reads quickly and found his receivers on these types of plays. These throws were drive starters and they were also used on many of the first and second and longs to help manage the down and distance. Jones was adept at finding the open man on these plays. He would make a determination pre-snap and then he would execute the play finding space usually against underneath zone coverages. Additionally, what also impressed me about Jones was that he was aggressive with the football and was willing to take shots when he had the opportunity. At times, he even would do this with a defender in his face. He would stand strong in the pocket and he'd deliver. It was a really good trait to see. Jones took some big hits behind a below average line and he didn't let that pressure affect him. It's clear Jones has a ton of confidence and he showed that in every single game I watched. After going through his tape, Jones was a lot better on third downs than I expected. He seemed to have a good understanding of where the sticks were, and he understood how to use his legs to create on the ground if nothing was there for his receivers. His mobility is also a nice touch, and he used that to escape the pocket to pick up first downs. Now, in terms of pocket awareness, what I like about Jones is that if he senses pressure, he'll step up and avoid it to make a throw outside the pocket. He showed on a number of occasions that he has this ability. He clearly is quick enough to move around, and he usually has good footwork to create off script. However, it's the sensing of the pressure that he still needs to work on. To start the improvement section of this video, sensing pressure, especially from the edge, is something that Jones drastically needs to work on. He'll casually drift into sacks, and since he'll stand at the depth of nine yards in the pocket, it allows edge rushers to turn the corner and impact his throw. He needs to step up in the pocket to make his passes, and he doesn't always do this. What kills me is that he's frustratingly inconsistent in this ability. 
I mentioned that if he sees pressure, he usually does a good job avoiding it, but oftentimes he'll have defenders at his feet or in his throwing radius because he doesn't move when he should. He'll stand there like a statue taking hits when he simply doesn't have to. Now, from a giant standpoint, their offensive line wasn't the best last season, but it also wasn't the worst either. According to Pro Football Focus, they were ranked 23rd, and they also spent a first-round pick on a left tackle in the past draft as well. That should definitely help. In addition to very inconsistent pocket awareness, Jones needs to get better at working through his progressions to stay in the structure of his offense. What will happen is that he's good at making those quick throws off three-step and five-step drops, but once he gets past his first read, his timing will suffer drastically. He'll be late on a lot of his throws. This lateness will cause him to throw passes into dangerous windows, even though I like the initial idea in the first place. For example, in the Bucks game, Jones saw the backside dig route coming open, but he completely missed the fact that the safety was sitting there. Jones was extremely lucky this wasn't picked off. The ball should have been out half the full second earlier, and as soon as the receiver cleared the defender's hips. It's at that point that he should have thrown it, but Jones was late, which caused the almost interception. Here's another example in Week 16 against the Redskins. Jones had a flood concept on the left, and he decided to hold on to it instead of going underneath with the ball. This, in my opinion, is where he should have thrown it. Now, even though he didn't pull the trigger here, Jones worked his way backside to his receiver running a dig route. There's actually a window after Cody Latimer broke on this route. This is where Jones could have hit him for a 15-yard completion if he threw it with timing. However, and just like in that last play, Jones was late once again. He stared on the left side, not moving on quick enough, and the pass was broken up. This ball once again should have been on a half the full second earlier, but since Jones sat there bouncing at a spot, he was late to throw this ball as well. To go along with lateness, another thing that affected his ability to complete downfield throws was his discipline with his eyes. If Jones had a matchup he liked, he'd sometimes forecast that to the entire defense by staring them down. Take this fade route from Darius Slayton on the left. After starting in a nasty split alignment close to the formation, Slayton angles his route vertically before breaking outside. This was to create space for this throw. Meanwhile, Jones from the backfield took the snap, and after checking for the safety, he stared in the direction of his target. He took three full bounces at the top of his drop before he threw it. Now, the placement would have been fine on this play if and only if Jones first looked off the safety. However, because he skipped this crucial step, this invited Harrison Smith to sprint over and knock the ball loose. Outside of pocket awareness and throwing with anticipation, one area I think we'll all unanimously agree that Jones needs to improve on is his ball security. I don't want to beat a dead horse because this is covered in literally every single article and video on Jones, but it's still important to bring up here. Jones fumbled the ball 18 times as a rookie, which is the fifth highest single season total in NFL history. Looking around the NFL, there have been plenty of examples where quarterbacks worked on it and fixed it over time. This is just what Jones needs to do to improve. By all reports from the offseason, it seems like he's spending the time doing that. Now, because I was curious, I looked over the last five years worth of data just to see how frequently a typical quarterback fumbles in the NFL. Looking at quarterbacks with more than 32 starts or two full seasons, the average quarterback fumbles the ball 0.5 times per game. Meanwhile, quarterbacks with fewer than 32 starts, the average is roughly 0.7 times per game. Obviously, Jones is currently on the higher end with his 1.5, but again, this is just for reference and we're hoping he can improve it and get it down to that 0.5 to 0.7 number. Now, after going through his film and specifically looking at these fumbles in detail, some of them were clearly impossible to stop. Sometimes Jones would simply hit mid-throw when a defensive lineman would win early and he would get into the backfield. These were unavoidable. However, there were times that Jones was clearly at fault. He'd fumble by pure negligence by simply not protecting while scrambling. Also, since he has a nasty habit of holding onto the football for far too long while standing in the pocket like a statue, he'd lose it in these cases as well. The way I see it is that improving his pocket awareness like we already discussed and also his strength through contact will be key factors here. While I'm not going to spend any more time talking about fumbles, a discussion around turnovers is still really important as it concerns the Jones. The number of turnover-worthy plays, including things like interceptions and dropped interceptions, was way too high for him this season. According to Pro Football Focus, Jones had nine dropped interceptions in 2019, which is good for the third highest in the NFL. Meanwhile, another source, Kibi Data Mine, claimed that Jones actually threw 30 interceptable passes last season, meaning that he actually had 18 dropped picks. Regardless of which number is actually correct, and I tend to lean towards PFF on this one as it's more in line with my own analysis, this number is still way too high. Turnovers in general are just something that Jones desperately needs to fix. To give you more color on this interception problem, I think we need to go through his worst game of the season. This one by far was against the New England Patriots. In this one, he finished with three interceptions, but he easily could have had five. What kills me is that he was making terrible decision after terrible decision. He'd hold on to the ball for far too long when he should have thrown it away. He was inaccurate to say the least, and he was late on a number of his passes. Frankly speaking, it was just painful to watch. 
to illustrate just how poorly this game went, let's look at a play from the third quarter. Lining up in shotgun left, the Patriots had two safeties deep. Against the Giants, they were playing a lot of cover one, so there was a good chance that this play was also man coverage as well. From this alignment, for example, New England loves to play cover one robber specifically. However, that was not their coverage here. The Patriots were playing classic cover two. Stephon Gilmore made contact with his receiver at the bottom of your screen, and then he bailed backwards into his sideline zone. Jones thought he had the tight end open on his out route, but he was very much mistaken on this play. Gilmore squatted on the route, keyed the eyes of the quarterback, and then jumped in front for possibly the easiest interception of his entire life. Jones had no business throwing this pass. This is inexcusable. He should have seen the coverage post-snap, which he clearly misread from the start, and he should have adjusted accordingly. This interception was 100% his fault. My main issue with Jones out of all the things that I've already talked about was the same issue I had when he came out of college. A couple times a game or even more, Jones would make a throw that left you wondering why. Like there's no reason for some of these throws. Like Jones would be good driving down the field gaining 5 or 6 yards of play in the quick passing game, then all of a sudden he unleashes the dragon, yells screw it, and then throws it up into coverage. I just don't get it. The thought process is really what confuses me. And yes, we can say rookies make rookie mistakes, but he also did this in college as well. Now for the record, I'm not saying that Jones will never break this habit. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying is that if he doesn't break this habit, this type of play will define his success in the NFL. If you want an NFL comparison for what Jones could be if he doesn't fix it, you have to look at a guy like James Winston. He's the prime example of what happens when you mix upper tier talent with extremely hit or miss decision making. Winston is now the backup for the Saints even though he still has a ton of talent. This roller coaster style of play is something he needs to smooth out in order for him to become a franchise quarterback for this team. To wrap up this video, Jones clearly has talent. To me, that was never the question. Many I'm sure will watch this video, will see some of the big plays in the box score, claiming that I ignored those, and then will tell me that yes, you can tell that Jones obviously was worth a first round pick. The issue I have with making that declaration is that we simply don't know yet. The book on Daniel Jones is far from complete. We won't know for at least another two full seasons if Jones is actually good. Now for what we do know right now is that Jones showed us plenty of highlight plays that should make you very excited if you're a Giants fan. He's also done the exact opposite as well. He's thrown some serious head scratchers that leave you extremely confused as what you just saw. Like I mentioned in the Dak Prescott video last week, it's all a balance. Our goal is to balance these two extremes and find consistency in play at the most important position in sports. In my opinion, if Jones can find that balance, and if he can consistently cut down on the turnover-worthy plays, he'll turn into a good quarterback. If he doesn't, however, and if the roller coaster keeps on going up and down, it's going to be a long four years for Giants faithful. Well, that's all I have for you in this one. If you enjoyed this video and if you want to support the channel, feel free to follow the link to my Patreon account below. As we continue into the summer, I'll have more videos just like this one, and next week we'll take a deep dive into Dwayne Haskins' rookie season and what we learned from looking at his film. Until then, take care, and you can follow me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.